Clitorati, have you ever read the stars to find true love, health, fame, beauty, or success? Astrology is a really powerful tool to use and what we do in our signature masterclass called pleasure planning. And this is the sexiest way to create your pleasure positive life. So today we have a very special guest. She is America's number one astrologer. Her Your Daily Astrology column is syndicated to hundreds of newspapers throughout the United States and internationally with a daily readership to the millions. An astrology pioneer, she is the inventor of a star timer personal astrology astrology calendars and love stars, love compatibility reports, and the only reports which can predict love compatibility with 95% accuracy. This makes me nervous. She has now helped tens of thousands of people make real progress towards their dreams of love and success. We are so thrilled to have her on today so that we can get our personal timing right, understand our relationships more fully, and take charge of our lives. Please welcome Magi Helena. Thank Welcome. You, oh, um, it's so good to be here with you. They say, you know, don't mix business and pleasure. And I am so happy that we did for, uh, the, fellow, <laughs> for the fellow Clitorati out here. I had the profound privilege of working with Helena um, inside your business and was absolutely obsessed with what I found. I was like, wait, hold on. We you. should do a podcast recording. <laughs> I know. Thank and you. And I've used astrology for the last 15 years probably I get a reading like every year to kind of help me map out big life decisions just to help me influence my decisions a little bit so I can get my timing as good as possible so I'm very excited to hear what you have to say today <laughs> okay I have to say clitorati is like the best thing ever that word I just love stuff like that so as soon as I read that it was like this is perfect I love it yeah, those are our listeners, and my husband actually came up with that, which is pretty badass. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's totally genius. It really is. Um, I would say one thing to listeners right now, which is that um, getting a read on the cycles that are influencing you is kind of one thing, and understanding the right days to take actions is something else. They're actually two different things. You know, one is more... more um, I won't say it's more generalized, but but there's lots of things influencing us at any given time, you know, and they can be very contradictory. We can have one thing that makes us wiser and one thing that makes us stupider happening at the same time. Um, and we can have many more. They layer up a lot more than that. But but basically, those those types of influences tend to be longer. They can last for days, weeks, months, or years, depending on what types of influences we're looking at. But the the timing is more like crystal clear, like this is the day to incorporate your business or to get married or to make love with a new person for the first time. You know, that day that you, you, you're setting something in stone that creates an imprint that influences the thing you just started. So they're, they're kind of two different things and they're two different ways we can leverage knowledge of the stars to help our lives. Wow. Mm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, so can you tell us, so there's two different types of astrology, which I actually didn't know. And so can you tell us the difference between scientific astrology sure. and belief-based astrology systems? Okay. Belief-based astrology started with the Babylonians and, and came forward to now through, through the millennia. Um, they were looking at the sky. They were working with only the, the planets that were visible to the naked eye, obviously, because mm -hmm. it was pre-telescope. And um, belief-based astrology, somebody said it, somebody else believed it, other people perpetuated it. It doesn't mean that there's any actual basis in fact, although there is there's something. I mean, there's a reason people gave these meanings to things. So it's not like it absolutely is never accurate. It can be sometimes. But personally, I like better assurances than that. You know, I like to know. I don't want to just think, well, okay, maybe it'll work or maybe it won't. I want to know, like, this is the day to get married or whatever it is. So, so science-based astrology sort of evolved with the computer age. First of all, telescopes, so we have a lot more points to look at. Secondly, um, we had the ability to start data crunching, where you could actually take 10,000 incorporation dates or 10,000 wedding dates 
and plug them into something that helps you see, oh, yeah, well, we can see that, you know, all these divorces had this in the chart, or all these failed businesses, or all these super successful, you know, S&P 500 businesses all have this in their charts, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So what we started to do is evolve. I say we because I'm a member of a society, and I've been involved in the research that the society's been doing for more than 20 years now. But the research started before me. It started about 35 years ago. And, and we're just looking for what consistently works, just like any kind of science. So we call it scientific or science-based astrology because we're not just saying, oh, yeah, you know, if I'm a Virgo, that means this. We're mm -hmm. saying, okay, we can demonstrate that 10,000 successful marriages have this in their wedding chart. So it's a very different way of looking at things. It's not less cosmic because we're still using the cosmos. It's just more in alignment with actual natural law, which is what science is always trying to figure out. What's the law here? What, what, how does this work? So that's what science-based astrology does, and that's the big difference between science-based and belief-based. Um, some of the things we've found in all that research First of all, is that regular astrology chart that everybody looks at, it's like a sheet of paper, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a sheet of paper. Right. And, and the universe is not one-dimensional. Right. So if you're going with the as above, so below thing, which is the premise of astrology and one of the great ancient pieces of knowledge, then wouldn't we want to see a model of the cosmos that matches the sky, you know, i.e. three-dimensional? <laughs> right. So we found that the vertical relationships of the planets are every bit as important as those horizontal relationships around the wheel, and we found that the view of the sky from the sun, which is the center of our solar system, which is different than the view from Earth, mm -hmm. is equally important. So right there, there's four dimensions we're looking at. The vertical dimension and the horizontal dimension viewed from Earth and both dimensions viewed from sky. So it's, it's kind of like 3D chess versus tic-tac-toe. Yeah. Complicated, not as easy for a student to maybe apply, but it's a system that can do a lot more for people tangibly in their lives. It's not just kind of a woo-woo, this is fun to play with thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It comes like, Hey, here's your path. Here's your marching orders. You know, right? Mm, wow. I love that because I feel like getting involved in this podcast for me. I loved the science of sex because it was just it was so informative, and so I love the scientific based astrology and how it explains things so much more accurately. So it's like less guessing. So yeah, yeah less guessing is good. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and anyone that's like, you know, oh, astrology is woo woo. Like, I'm pretty sure you just myth busted that so hard. It 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 could be, but it, it in this instance and in the kind of astrology we're talking about today. It's not. It's science-based, which is hot. Turns us all on. We're really into the science of everything. You know what? When people say, well, do you believe in astrology? I say, do you believe in gravity? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. You know, you can, okay. Choose not to believe it. Then. Like it's less of a belief. And see what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's right. like, okay, you don't want to believe in science-based astrology. Sure, go do something on a horrible day. Unfortunately, you're going to carry the results with you. Right. Mm. Do you have people like challenge? Like they go try. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to do it on this day anyways and just see what happens. And then they come back and they're like, uh. First me, because I'm stubborn <laughs> and I'm somewhat impulsive. So there's a big thing where I've had to just really teach myself, cool your damn jets, girl. You know, just don't do it. Um, yes, and family members. My son grew up with this, so he, he always does it. He's 28. Um, but my husband, who has had, you know, part of a lifetime without me, has, you know, like destroyed the dash of our car by having a stereo installed on the wrong day and stuff like that. Wow. <laughs> It's kind of hilarious, but yes, and, and clients too will go, oh my God, why can't you just make me listen? And it's like, well, you will by the third time. By the third time. <laughs> yeah, the third, third time's time. a charm. 
Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we're really excited to hear because you can actually tell how you can be sexually compatible with someone through these oh, charts. Yeah. Oh yeah. So oh, how yeah. do you do that? Okay. <laughs> well, first, first of all, the, the research has helped us drill down. Oh, we do have one more trash track. That's okay. I am so sorry. I apologize, listeners. Um, it's trash day here in paradise. Um, okay. So <laughs> thank you for laughing, man. Um, so how do you tell? Well, there's different planets that rule different types of sexuality. Um, the big five sexual planets, Venus, Mars, Pluto, Juno, and Eros. Um, Pluto, we call it a planet. NASA keeps, you know, trying to decide if it's a side hoe or not. Right, but <laughs> side it, It's hoe. really our girl. <laughs> uh, I didn't make that up. That's a meme. It's hilarious. I love it. Anyway, I just love it so much. But um, Juno and Eros are asteroids. Um, they all have an influence on our sexuality, both our internal preferences and, and things that we love, uh, turn us on, turn us off, but they also, how the planets relate between two charts tells us a ton about the sexual attraction between two people, and not only that, will it last? Because mm. mm. guess what? Th these linkages don't all last. Some do, some don't. And and it's like you just don't know, and people go, oh, Helena, you have no idea how hot it is, and I'll go, yeah, I've had that with someone. I do actually remember. <laughs> How that was and how I, I said to myself, yeah, this isn't going to burn out. And then it did because it always does. Mm. So um, we look at that. And, and basically what I did in, in my um, relationship reports is I broke out all the different sexual connections between two charts into three main categories. One is sexual heat. That's like straight up initial attraction mm. if the people also are each other's types. Okay. The one thing astrology can't do is make someone look different than they look. Right. You know, so if, if a person has a certain type, and even some people that think they don't really do, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, and, and the type isn't necessarily height or coloring or body type or whatever, it, it's many things. So, but it's physical stuff. It's, it's chemical stuff. So, so astrology can't tell us if two people are going to be each other's types. You know, if, if I only love tall men and this super adorable guy that I have great sexual linkages with is really short, I might not ever look at him just because I like tall men. So stuff like that does play a role and it's why it's important to get face to face with people quickly. And, and I can speak on that forever, but, but for a second, let's, let's go to the other sexual categories. One is sexual harmony. And what that breaks down is if I do what comes naturally to me and my partner does what comes naturally to them, just 100% natural, not trying to please or any of that stuff, if we just do sort of how we want to do out, out of the box, you know, as, as we come out the gate in life, we do the natural thing. How well does that work between two people? Mm. Some people it's fabulous. Some people it's horrible. But there is the element of wanting to please your partner. So, so that isn't necessarily a kiss of death, but it does mean that, you know, you might not be in defeat, but if your partner wants to adore your feet, you better, you know, go get a really good pedicure. <laughs> you know, that's, that's where sexual harmony kind of plays in. And then the last one is forever attraction. Will this last? Will it last if you marry? Will it last if you don't marry? Because marriage affects that too. Hmm. Legally, getting married actually kills certain sexual linkages. It's kind of one of the ironies of life. So, so interesting. Those are like the three main categories that the planets and the linkages and the clashes between charts fit into and how they actually show up and work. Because my approach of astrology is not let's teach people about Ixion and Haumea. My approach to astrology is how can I help you in your life right now today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what do you do when people are already married in long-term relationships and they come to you like for fun to like see what's going on or to come to resolve some sort of issue and their chart just never matched up to begin with? There's always that. Um, wedding dates are really important. 
Um, a great wedding date can smooth over a lot of rough edges between two people, between their charts. Um, a good wedding date uh, makes people fall in love with their marriage, not just their partner, which is really important because if your partner's, you know, being a dick, then it's really a great thing if you can be so in love with your marriage that you're willing to, you know, be patient until they come out of that horrible cycle right. of it that caused them to be a dick. And, and I'm a she, her, I, you know, I'm, I'm cis, so I say stuff like that, right. but that doesn't mean that I'm not all inclusive in terms of how this totally, works. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. I remember when, uh, we were working together, um, several months ago and I, 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 we ran my wedding date by you and you got back to me like a day later, you were like, we need to talk about this date. This date is like, you couldn't have picked the worst fucking date. Really? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy to report though that um, there were some life circumstances that um, uh, I would say that was going on for my husband that was definitely affecting um, his desire for life in general in and out of the bedroom. And that was having, oh, yeah. uh, that was heightened when we were talking. And so I was very much like, Oh no, are we doomed? Like, are we going to make it? Um, you're never doomed. You're never, never doomed. doomed. And I'll tell you why when you're done. Amazing. Um, yeah. Like, so I was, I realized, you know, stay in my personal power, do me support the boo. Um, and then my husband made some really amazing choices, probably on dates that were aligned for him and moved right. through, um, this sort of rough patch for himself, got back to a place of personal empowerment. And then uh, the homeostasis was, was, was sort of restored. That being said though, since we booked this interview you date with you, I'm like, we should, st I, I wonder if we could still do that though, because I mean, I don't want that to come back and haunt me five years from now that, that, that wedding date that we didn't renew our vows, you know, on a, on a, on a better day. So I actually am curious about that more so. You can do a renewal of vows. Um, essentially what happens when you get married is you're doing two things. You're creating a legal entity, you know, presuming you legally right. marry. Right. And then you're, you're creating a spiritual entity by making that spiritual commitment to one another. Right. So you can't really change the legal date without legally getting a divorce and legally remarrying. I have had couples do that, but it, you don't necessarily have to go that far. Um, a renewal of vows done on a really fabulous day kind of creates an overlay it's a new spiritual chart so it creates a partial new imprint that can help offset negativity in the other imprint what it can't do i'm going to be honest is bring the super hot sex back because the hottest sex comes from stuff that dies with marriage or dies period um, pluto mars connections between charts i call up against the wall connections literally you can't even get to to the bedroom you, you know the minute you're in from the uber you know that's it man you know the door slammed and you're up against the wall that's pluto mars it always dies it's fabulous it's fun but it dies um the juno linkages die with marriage mm. so if you never marry you never lose the juno linkages it's just funny how these things work so I try to tell people you can't you can't really bring mm. a whole lot of hot sex back into a marriage and stay legally married because of the way the Juno linkages work. But what you can do is set up a lot of things that can help support a happy sex life, and that you can do. But you can't really work the stars that way. I wish you could. I you kind could, of. Boy, like... I could really make money. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's kind of kinky to like get like legally divorced and then remarried again to the same person. <laughs> Legally divorced, remain legally divorced, but continue to live together, be partners, and never told their friends or family that they were legally divorced. Wow. So people yeah. have all kinds of tweaks to, to, to improve their lives, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, we gotta do what we gotta do to make it as good as we can. Now I'm like fantasizing about like a divorce fantasy. Oh, oh God. <laughs> well, I want to stay with my I, husband, though. I do not. Yeah. The divorce date's really important, too, um, especially if you mm, have children. Right. Because that it becomes the ruling chart of your relationship 
in terms of whatever connection remains between you going forward. If there's no kids, it may not matter, but if there's kids, it matters a lot in terms of co-parenting. <sighs> I come from divorced parents, and I, I, I feel like they, they did it on a shitty day for all of us. <laughs> it just feels like they did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Most days are shitty. And, and that is the sad truth. You know, if it was super easy to be happily married, lots more people would be doing it. If it was super easy to be a billionaire, lots more people would be doing it. And, and there's plenty of people who are pouring their hearts and souls out into their efforts, whether it's business or making their families and relationships positive, working on the self, whatever it is. But if your timing's off, it doesn't matter. Now, timing won't change if you're not doing the work. Timing isn't going to save your, your ass if you want to just sit around and have, you know, the billion dollars show up at your doorstep. It's not going to go mm -hmm. that way. But timing's the difference. It can be the absolute watershed difference between something that really works and something that really doesn't work. Hmm. So interesting. So juicy. So yeah. juicy. Here's a thing that can relate to timing in sexual relationships okay. since these are the uh -huh. we need to give them what they need um timing there's two charts that rule early relationships one is the first face-to-face -face meeting so you want that day to be really good and the second ruling chart is the first love making both of those dates are really important one has more to do with uh, the interpersonal side one has more to do with the sexual side of the relationship, but they're both what we call natalizations, meaning we create a chart. It's like a date stamp in the cosmos, and you're going to march forward with that date stamp as long as you're in that relationship, unless you marry, because wedding charts displace previous mm, charts. Mm. So, so if you want, the, the way I tell people, you know, and, and different people are engaging with others for various reasons. Some people just want to hook up and have a great time. You know, that's a fine motivation. And, and, and basically what you're looking for timing wise is great sexy days that aren't going to bite you in the ass. You know, I, you're not in horrible heart wreck cycles that mean that this person could do you harm. You could bring in a person that hurts you on some level, mm. physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever. You know, unwanted pregnancy, STD, whatever. These are all ways to get your heart broken. Mm. You know, um, it isn't just like, oh, he left me. And I'm devastated. You know, but but there's other kinds of heartbreak too. Mm. Is what I tell people. But but you want that. You want to get those two charts really good to protect yourself. Um, if you're looking for a soulmate, you want those charts to help support a relationship that can grow toward you know true love. And not just, um, okay, this is great and hot, but, but we, we did it for the first time on a day that supports freedom and, and exploration. That isn't going to likely lead toward love. So you kind of leverage your timing based on what your objectives are. Mm. And the other thing that I think our clitorality will be really interested in is that you can actually tell your own turn-ons and your partner's turn-on and turn-offs. Oh, just based on their chart that is so huh? interesting like is it, how specific does that so get you look at, <laughs> well really specific um for example people you look at, at the, the sexual planets and geometries in people's charts and again we're looking in all those dimensions too we're not just looking at the one little flat piece of paper and, and so we're looking at where Venus, Mars, and the other sexual planets are, what, what patterns they're forming, what geometric shapes they're forming um, with other planets. So if Mercury is with sexual planets, Mercury rules talking and thinking. So these are people that need a lot of verbal foreplay and a lot of mm. mental, you know, teasing and stuff because they need to get their mind in the game before their body can get in the game. Pallas is another great example. Pallas is an asteroid, and it rules uh, logistics and strategies. It rules coding and, and software and stuff like that. It's very sequential. So Pallas sexual people, they want to set the stage. You know, they want to have the perfect candle and the perfect incense and the perfect outfit and the perfect day. on. And they're looking at their sex calendar because they don't want to pick a bad day. And, and so on. So they love to have it all organized. You know, um, 
Varuna people would be all or nothing people. You know, they're either all in or just forget it, not tonight. You know, so you look at the different sexual planets and see, you know, some people like, like Mars is a sexual planet, but it's also a very physical planet on other, other levels, such as athletics. So if a super Mars person where that's super highlighted with other sexual planets could point to somebody that, hey, you know, I want to do it while we're on our hike. You know, I want to get all sweaty on our mountain bikes and just find a nice bush. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, it, it, you can look at that now. Now, you can also look at Saturn-related stuff. Saturn sexual midpoints to see what turns people mm. off and and what's like a big hard no for them, you know, when it comes to sex. But you can also see things like people who only want to do it if mm. they're in love or they only want to do it if they feel like this person is my friend. They don't need love, but I have to at least feel like we're right. friends. That's me. So you can really see a lot of things that people need in order to have sex, but also what they like and dislike. Mm. I love that. So you're going to give us a live, a live example in our Clit Talks Hottest Sex Tips on your romance and sex calendar, but you do have a special gift for our Clitorati, yes. and you did yes. our romance and sex calendars from our birth and both with our partners, yes. which is amazingly generous. I want to talk about who, who's the first victim. I don't know. <laughs> I, was re I was looking at my chart and I was like, I, don't, I can't tell if this is good or bad. <laughs> are a little bit different and these are romance and sex so let's just talk about first of all what are the elements okay. in your calendar um, and i will say for for listeners and viewers um we are giving you guys one month free uh but you have to go to the special link and you have to use the special and that will all code. but with the link in the coupon code which you will get from these lovely ladies are uh, what are you you're <laughs> lit leaders we're, we're, <laughs> okay Clit Talk are going to give you this. So here's what's in this calendar, um, and I'm looking, I'm oh, looking at yours, okay. because I just okay, great. to volunteer you. Um, <laughs> so the first kind of cycle, because what these are graphed out is cycles. You're not going to see the planets. You're going to see what cycles are influencing you. So the first type of cycle is Cinderella cycles. These are super important to understand for anything related to romance and sex. They also have a career and rest of your mm -hmm. life application. But you get that in your romance and sex calendar. Cinderella are, I call, they're, they're, they're always Chiron related. Chiron is a planetoid. Um, wasn't discovered, I think, till the 80s, if memory serves, 1980s. Um, Chiron rules true love and commitment, but it's also kind of, I call it the magical goodie bag planet because it just seems to bring so much good stuff, whether it's people seeing you in your best light, you seeing them mm. in their best light, you're, you're more receptive during, during Cinderella cycles, they create buy-in. So they're, they're, they also bring soulmates. People meet soulmates when they're in personal mm. Cinderella cycles. So knowing your Cinderella cycles are important. Now you have Cinderella cycles running the whole month of July. Great. So that's fabulous. I'm, I'm looking okay. at your July month. That's right when we're now. recording. Viewers, listeners can't see that yet, but okay. So that's Cinderella and that's just good in general. Now looking your best, feeling your best, thinking people thinking you're awesome. Um, that yeah. helps in business too. I mean, it helps in every, everything. So, so knowing when you're in Cinderella cycles is really important. Okay, the next type of cycle is romantic cycles. These are great, and, and they actually have a money application oh. too. They help bring money in, which is good. But there's a, there's a double-edged sword thing in terms of relationships with these romantic cycles. First of all, it makes you really romantic. It makes you really want to have those passionate, you know, romantic walks on the beach and pick with you know prosecco and all that but the downside is if your partner mm -hmm. isn't like that and you're with somebody you're going why aren't you doing that stuff why aren't you buying the chocolate dip strawberries right. maybe what's wrong with you you know and and you can start to yearn for that um, so it can make you dissatisfied mm -hmm. with the current mm -hmm. relationship if you're single during romantic cycles, it can make you so desperate for love and romance that you will really settle. You'll really lower your bar. 
So it's important to know when you're having those cycles too because you need to understand all the different effects. Now, all of the stuff I'm explaining is all in the key to your calendar. So if you go past the last month in your calendar, it's okay. all there. The next thing you're seeing in your blackout cycle, Katie, is blackout. See in your calendar. I mean, I said that wrong because when my eyes are reading, my mouth sometimes <laughs> follows. Um, okay, so blackout cycles are important. Those are heartbreak cycles. Um, those are times when if you meet someone new, they could be a heartbreaker to you. Now, they're most deadly when they're black, mm -hmm. like yours is right now. Um, there are also times when people tend to see you at your worst. You know, they're the time when your toddler looks you in the face and just goes, no. Is that happening now? No. Mommy's bad and wrong today. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is happening now. You only have one. And, but it's not helpful to you, and it peaks. I'm scrolling forward a little bit. It actually peaks on August 5th. So that those last three days, August 3rd, 4th, 5th, and halfway into August 6th till noon local time, you want to be real careful, and you don't want to sign anything or do anything important. Even though this is on a romance and sex calendar, this blackout cycle relates to stuff beyond your sex life. Or, or your romantic life. People see you at your worst. People Now, you only have one. So that's not that bad. People can have four or five at a time. Mm -hmm. So let's put it in perspective. It is black, and you are toward the end where it's strong, and you're probably feeling you're probably more weepy than usual. You're probably more tired than usual. You know, all these things are things that can affect you. Please read that section in your, in your calendar key because there's a whole lot of emotional and other things to understand about how they make you feel as well as strategies for working okay. with them when you know you have them. Now, the next cycle is really fun, and you have woo, a lot of good <laughs> sex cycles. Um, good sex cycles are fairly frequent, so everybody tends to have a lot, but, you know, it can vary a lot, too. So you can have a days where you've got 10 concurrent good sex cycles, or you can have a day with one or two, and it does make a difference. Right. The more, the merrier, you know, the, the, big, the better the party. Um, it, good sex cycles are cycles that help mm. increase your libido. They also increase your performance ability. You know, it, it for people who are male, it can be, and forgive me if I'm not saying that exactly inclusively perfectly. I, my intentions are good. My understanding of how to say stuff right is for still all of evolving. Us. As is perhaps yeah. the whole situation is evolving. But but for, pe for, for males who have to perform, these good sex cycles mm. are critical. Because they're going to tell you how well you can perform. You know, people who are female, often it's easier to perform or fake it. Hopefully we don't fake it anymore. Hopefully we're not right. doing that in our lives anymore. But um, good sex cycles help us perform as well as increase libido and interest. So these aren't necessarily all that important to be looking at for a first meeting date. They're very important to be looking at for mm. a first lovemaking date. Because like a timestamp, yeah. like I gave you that idea of the timestamp. It's like you're setting something in cement and you're dragging it behind you. For as long as the sexual relationship that you start on a particular day goes. So you want to be dragging something right. fun and wonderful with you. You know, woo, I'm bringing the party rather than woo, I'm bringing right. the, the total downer <laughs> yeah. experience here. You know, now bad sex cycles are the last type of cycle on this calendar. Bad sex cycles have several things. First of all, they definitely lower your libido and your interest. You know, you're just not mm -hmm. as into it. But they do more than that. Because you're less into it, you may decide to mm -hmm. go down a rabbit hole to increase okay. your excitement. And some of those rabbit holes aren't necessarily good for us, but some of those rabbit holes just mm -hmm. maybe aren't as wholesome. And, and what happens is sexual rabbit holes are like chasing a high with drugs. Mm -hmm. You know? The idea is not to be chasing highs. The idea is to have them happen organically because life is so fabulous. Not because, well, if I if I do this one more level of my fetish or if I, you know, do one more line of coke or whatever it is in, in life, you know, chasing a high is, is, is a zero is yeah. a game that you can never win. 
And, and so it, if you know you're in bad sex cycles, it's a lot healthier to just say, okay, I'm in bad sex cycles, so it's just not going to be as much fun, or I'm just not going to be as motivated. Rather than go, oh, well, I'll try right. this thingy over here, which then puts you in that spiral of continuing to chase highs, and that's just not helpful. It's not, a, it's not I'm against any kinks. It's, you know, whatever anybody wants to do is fine with me. But they may not be supportive of a, of, a, of, a, of a healthy life, a functional life. And in that case, then, then mm-hmm. I'm concerned for that person. This is making me think of how, and I've seen it just with certain uh, friends of mine, where a person can become the, like, the high that they're chasing. Mm. And it might not be someone who has like, you know, everyone else is like, oh gosh, why are you with this person? This person's not right for you. This person's not healthy for you. But they're like, cling to it. They're like, oh, I need it. I need that dick or I need that pussy, that person. And so it just, does that have a, and I know we were talking about more specifically about, but performance and, and also specifically with, with kinks and chasing certain extremes, but can that also show up with like who we choose, right? Absolutely. It doesn't show up in this particular romance and sex calendar. Right. Where it does show up is in the the um, complete relationship reports that I also mm-hmm. do. Um, what holds people in relationships is something called captivations, and, and captivations are a glue. They're neutral glue. They're not good glue, and they're not bad glue. They're just glue. And they're gorilla glue, man. They will hold people in if there's enough of them. And they are the primary reason that people stay in bad relationships mm-hmm. or, or unfulfilling relationships is because they're glued in with those captivations. Um, they can, they're, they're, captivations can be good in good relationships because they give enough glue to help people ride out tough times. Like you talked about a recent tough time, yeah. Madison. You know, some of the captivations... Plus, your, of course, your marriage commitments and stuff like that and your love for each other. But captivations hold people as glue them together through hard times. So they're very helpful in that way. Where they become really sulfurous and dangerous is when people are in a very difficult, abusive situation and they're highly captivated. Um, you know, that's how we get, like, prisoner-type situations in relationships. I actually want to do a video on are you a prisoner in your relationship Mm. and just talk about captivations with people um they're good and they're bad and it just depends but for people who are in relationships where none of their people none of their tribe understand why they're there that's the answer and it's always the answer you can always find that's really interesting Mm. so it's important to understand how deeply captivated you are but also there's a balance of power in relationships based on captivations so if people are within about 20%, like like partner A captivates partner B 60 times and partner B captivates partner A 56 times, which is my reports actually break all that down. But if it's that close, then the balance of power is pretty close. It's pretty level, and that's good. If it gets about 20% off, then you have a situation where one person really is the controller in the relationship. And if that controller is a benevolent, loving, kind, selfless person, that's not that dangerous either. But if you got a controller who's a narcissist or a sociopath, that's really yeah. dangerous. Mm. Which can be hard to tell. Right. It's like, oh shit, three months in, I think I'm dating a narcissist. <laughs> yeah, well, it, I, I, it yeah. kind of is everybody. Right. You know, everybody gets real, real familiar right. with the DSM <laughs> dating. That's very true. <laughs> Very true. Well, thank yeah. you for all that information. It's, it, it is super helpful. And it's so interesting because it has been um, a really kind of emotional and hard and like sick time for me because I'm pregnant and I was just, I have my toddler who's amazing, but he's also really shifting with how my body's changing. So it has been hard and also business has been hard. So it's interesting to have you um, mm-hmm. say all of that. Now, now, we're not looking at the calendar that tells all about your business. We're looking at your romantic and sexual life with this calendar. It just so happens that some of these cycles have other applications mm-hmm. that show up in other calendars, too. You will feel a great deal better when this blackout cycle is over, but you should wait. You, this blackout cycle is graphed on your calendar mm-hmm. through Friday, August 5th. 
but my calendars essentially graph what's there at noon each day. So on Saturday morning the 6th, you might still have a, a little bit of that heartbreak left. So you would want to wait until 12.01 local time. We, we know if it's not graphed on that day, then it's gone by noon. So if you wait till 12.01, right. you're good on Saturday the 6th. And, and, and that mean, that's in terms of business, but also, like, if somebody's really pissed at you right now, for example, because they get mad at us when we're in blackout cycles yeah. because we're bigger jerks when we're in blackout cycles, we just are. Cinderella's can help offset that, but although you have some Cinderella's, you don't have just an enormous amount that would help help you. So, like, if you kind of need to make amends to somebody, wait until Saturday at 12.01 or later, and it'll fly better, and they'll accept it, because when you're peeking in a blackout... Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you say. Mm, so interesting. <laughs> Basically. And then you leverage that in business, too. If you've got a customer or a client mm-hmm. that you need to, you know, work something out with, Wait until your crappy starts yeah. over if you can, you know, because that, that can make a huge difference in how well you can you know, gel that back together. Such good information. Mm. I love this. Gosh, it's so good. Yeah, like Clitorati, these reports are the bomb.com. So definitely go ah! into the uh, show notes of this episode right in the description where you're streaming this from so you can get your code and get the party started when it comes to your stars and figuring this out. Um, I, I have, I've, you've done these reports for the last several months with, uh, Helena and, uh, they're so insightful just knowing when you're just, just having even an awareness of looking at the next month as Katie introduced this episode, talking about pleasure planning. We're really obsessed with planning pleasure in our life. And so just knowing if you know a month out and you have these reports, you can see like, hmm, the second week of the month isn't really my best week out of all four of those weeks. And it's just so insightful to be able to like say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to make plans on that week. I'll wait till the third week and fourth week are so much more open for me to receive what I'm actually trying to create here. So highly, highly, highly recommend. Well, thank you. Yes. Well, it's been... It's just been a long time coming. I've been wanting to have you on the show and for a while. And um, I mean, my report's all over the place right now. I'm like all sorts of good sex with blackout, with romance. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to really need to like weigh out my sections because I have a lot of kind of everything happen at once. <laughs> Do you want me to comment or, 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 or are we in a Please, different place now? You know, I would love your commentary to that. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, I'm looking at July for you, Madison, and um, you have fewer Cinderella's than Katie, for example, but you still have most days of the month have them, and they just really help. They, you know, they just help gloss stuff over on a lot of levels. People think we're cooler and, and so on. You have a lot of romance cycles. You know, we already talked about how they work as a double edged sword. You have a blackout. Um, and then a second one that starts July 27th, so it just started yesterday. Mm. Um, but your blackouts are still in the gray portion, which is not as bad. So it's not as strong. But let's see. So my wedding anniversary is August 5th, by the way. Which is in okay, the- and that's actually fine. These blackouts, okay, I'm just oh. looking here. These blackouts continue in August, but they don't edge toward their peak until September, so they're not going to be that bad. And you also, when you get to September and they start turning black on you, you also are layering up tons of Cinderella's. Right. You still will have some emotional component, but the Cinderella's will help offset feeling horribly crappy or people thinking you're just the worst person ever. You know, the Cinderella's really help offset that. Yeah. You can use these romance and sex mm-hmm. calendars too to like plan vacations. That's a really <laughs> good thing because if you know your partner's peaking in bad sex cycles and you're in a blackout, that's not the right time Truth. to go away for a sex right. getaway. You know, because you'll be over emotional and, and they <laughs> won't be able to right. do their part. So, wow. you know, um, or just get a babysitter, you know, if you, if you like to have date nights, you know, like for you, Katie, you know, if you get a date night. I love that while, idea. I know my, my son's birthday party oh, is yeah. actually August 6th at 3.30. So I will be out of this black cycle by then. You will. You will and that's going to be great. But do as much as you can ahead of time because the last few days of that thing right. is going to flow smoothly for you as usual. So do as I much have, yeah. planning. I'm sure you already do, but do everything okay. you can as far as possible. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Actually, gosh. planning is so sexy. I know. I love it. On. I love it. 
<laughs> it's so good. Well, it's thank so good. you so much, Helena, for coming on today. I know we're going to do dive a little deeper with visuals of you really explaining the charts um, in our Clit Talks How to Sex Tips portal. So if anyone's interested in checking that out, that will be next. So okay. is there anything that you'd like to leave our listeners with? Please get the free calendar. Please do. It, you know, it's my gift to you. I enjoy doing stuff for people. It gives me so much pleasure. And if it can help you get a little more pleasure in your life. Thank you so much. So and uh, Clitorati, I know you're going to be jumping at this offer like like nuts. So anyways, we um, that's it for today. And I know that you made a huge difference for us. And you're going to make a huge difference for our Clitorati. And with mm-hmm. that, Clitorati, we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.